Hi, welcome to my tutorial on AWS Local Stack SQS. And in this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate how we can use Python for sending and receiving messages to the uh, local stack queue, local stack SQS queue. Well, uh, I have prepared a video uh, previously uh, which actually demonstrates how we can set up local stack SQS uh, on our system. So in case if you have not gone through that video, then I would first suggest you that you go through that video uh, and the link of uh, which I'll be providing in my descriptions below. And in case you already know, you are aware of how a local stack uh, SQS uh, works, then you can skip that video and just follow this video. So the key takeaways for this video session are simply sending message to the AWS SQS queue and receiving messages from the or uh, receiving or you can say processing message from the AWS SQS queue. Well, so let's start up the local stack SQS queue first. I mean, I'm assuming that you have already uh, set up the environment and you are ready to start up your local stack SQS. Okay, so to send message from Python to SQS queue, we need a library called Boto3. So in case if you don't have it installed, they can install it using this command, uh, using this install pack <coughs> you, uh, called pip install boto3. If you issue this command, it will install boto3 on your uh, system. Or else if you have uh, already downloaded Jupyter Notebook or uh, many other uh, uh, different uh, versions of uh, say ID, different types of ID in fact, then you should already be having boto3 included in the Python library. So you can check it if it's not included, they can use pip install boto3 to install this packet. Okay, as we saw in one of the previous tutorial, how we can create queue, list queue, send message to the queue, receive message from the queue. So this sending message and receiving message part, we'll do it through the Python program. Okay, we'll only create the queue. So to do that, first we need to check if our Docker is running. So for me, the Docker is already running. And uh, I am using the spider ID. You can use any ID of your choice. So it's not necessary that you have to use the same ID. So now let me start up Docker. So I'll go to my folder where I have kept the YAML file to start up the local stack, which is in docker compose.yml. So I'll issue the command docker compose up as we have done in the previous video. So it will take some time to start. In fact, it will start up quickly because I already have it. So it doesn't need to download any components. And I will open one more terminal in a new tab. Okay, so this has already started. I mean, the local stack is now up and running. So all these services are there, you can see. We have EC2 service, DynamoDB. We have SQS service, Lambda service. But anyway, we will be using the SQS service, this service. All are on port 4566. But you can change the port if required. Okay, so now let us create our queue. So you can name this queue as any name. I mean, so you can give it any name. I mean, so I have been giving this name my message hyphen queue. So just I just copy this command. This is the AWS CLI. And yes, you need to have AWS CLI installed as I mentioned in my previous tutorial. So I'll just paste it. So AWS, you have to give the attributes like a endpoint URL. So this is the endpoint URL you are want to use. And then SQS and you have to give the command create queue. In that queue name you have to give. And I have given the name as my message hyphen queue. Okay, let's execute it. Well, the queue 
has been created and this is the queue URL. So we'll use this in our code. And if you remember from the previous tutorial that AWS configure, which actually we should be doing before. So I've assumed you have already done AWS configure before running this queue command. Okay. So in AWS configure, we have this key ID, which is nothing but I had given as secret hyphen ID. You can give it any ID. Then secret key, I give this as name secret hyphen key. Then default region name already I have given US East hyphen one. And this is the default, I leave it as JSON. Or whatever you can leave it, that doesn't matter as of now. Now let me open up my ID. So I'm using a spider. So this is the command to send the message. So let me explain you what these do. Okay, first of all, you have to import this library bottle three. After you imported this library, then you have to get the service resource. So which client I'm using this service, I'm using SQS service. And in addition to that, you have to give some, if this is already configured, then no problem. You need, you can omit everything or else you can give all the configuration here only like access, AWS access key ID, which I took as secret ID. <coughs> Just now you saw, like I've give, provided this input in AWS secret access key is equal to secret key. Endpoint URL you have to mention. So this is the base URL which I am giving. And then the next one is the variable queue underscore URL, which I have taken the URL of the queue, uh, which is this one. The URL is being returned. So this entire URL I need to take. Sorry. So this URL which you are saying as highlighted. Okay. And then what I am doing is I am taking a variable called MSG and I'm using the raw underscore input. Uh, I'm using raw underscore input command to accept a message from the user. You can try the input command also. And whatever user has entered the value, it will be assigned to the message variable. And then this is the command to send the message SQS dot send us underscore message. And this is the parameter you have to give is Q URL and message body. So I've kept it very, very simple. It's one of the most basic form. In fact, message you can send as a full JSON structure, giving the different, different attributes. But here I am keeping it very simple. And after that, just to uh, see whether it has been successfully posted. So every message will have a message ID associated with it. So in that response, I'm just reading the message ID attribute and printing it just to check that, okay, this has been successful. So let us run this command and I will just bring this console, drag this console little here so that we can view it properly. So I run this. Okay. So after running it, it is asking me to enter the message because it comes in this line number seven and here it is stopping and asking me to enter a message. So I'm entering the message that hello from Python to SQS queue. So let the message be this and then I enter. Okay. So that means it has pushed the message to the queue. So let's validate it. So I go over here. So to receive the message, I can simply use this CLI command. Okay, so you see this whole entire message has come and whatever message I've entered through Python program, it has come in the body attribute. Message always comes in the body attribute. And you have got different attributes also of the message like sender ID and all this, but let's just focus on the body attribute. So you see that from Python, we have been successful in sending message to the AWS SQS queue. Fine. Though we are reading it through AWS CLI, but it is also possible to read this message and process this message in fact from Python program itself. So when we are creating a chat program or when we are having two different programs running which needs to communicate in a loosely coupled fashion. So we use the intermediator as the queue. So here is the code. 
So here also I import Boto3, then same way SQS, we get the resource, service resource. So same way SQS and all the configuration we need to give, what is the secret key, endpoint URL and the queue URL. So all these things will be same like we did uh, previously. Then queue is equal to you have to get the queue. So to get the queue, you have to refer to SQS variable and from there this method get queue by name. So queue name is my message queue. And then finally you process the message by printing out body and optional anyway this author name I just took from the documentation here I am not taking any author this is just from the previous ok so it will loop through the message at any way we just have one message so one time only it will loop so for message in q dot receive underscore messages it will print the message dot body why message dot body because what is the attribute this is what we need to say but if you want to say different read different attributes like message id or this you can provide it over here okay so now let's run this command and see we have received that message hello from python to sqs queue so just to summarize it we created a queue by issuing this command create queue okay by issuing this command create queue and in that queue we are sending message through python program uh, using this code where we are uh, getting the service resource then q url and then message we are accepting from the user and finally it pushes this message whatever the user has entered to the queue and then through this uh, program we are receiving the message and then one more line you can give to delete the message like generally whenever you read a message from the queue you should it's you should uh, always uh, generally the requirement is that the message should get deleted or after a certain period of time the message gets expired so there are lots of configuration you can do in the sqs queue this is just the basic thing which we are demonstrating so this is just to give you a concept of how you can send message and receive message from the queue using python so well that was all uh, for this session and thank you very much for your valuable time in watching my video and in the next video, I'll be uh, preparing a demo using Java. How using Java we can send the message to the SQS queue. So thank you very much and goodbye.